Welcome. Pastor Joe Oren and I welcome you to the online worship of Peace Lutheran Church. We continue to celebrate the 50 days of Easter. Today's gospel proclaims that in Jesus Christ we know who God is. And 1 Peter reminds us that we, Jesus' followers, are a holy people, called to be God's people in words and actions, bearing witness to the risen Christ, our way, our truth, and our life. And, of course, it is also Mother's Day. In this challenging time for all parents, we give you our thanks and our wishes for a blessed day. Thank you all for joining us. We gather near and far in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us give thanks for all that God has done. We give you thanks for in the beginning your spirit moved over the waters and by your word you created the world, calling forth life in which you took delight. Through the sea you delivered your people Israel from slavery into freedom. And at the river your son was baptized and anointed with the Holy Spirit. By water and your word you claim us as daughters and sons, making us heirs of your promise and servants of all. We praise you, Lord, for the gift of new life in the risen Jesus Christ. Shower us with your spirit and renew our lives with your forgiveness, your grace, and your love. To you be given honor and praise through Jesus Christ, our Lord, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty God, your Son Jesus Christ is the way, the truth, and the life. Give us grace to love one another, to follow in the way of his commandments, and to share his risen life with all the world. For he lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. A reading from the first letter of Peter. 
Like newborn infants long for the pure spiritual milk, so that by it you may grow into salvation, if indeed you have tasted that the Lord is good. Come to him, a living stone, though rejected by mortals, yet chosen and precious in God's sight. And like living stones, let yourselves be built into a spiritual house, to be a holy priesthood, to offer spiritual sacrifices acceptable to God through Jesus Christ. For it stands in scripture, see, I am laying in Zion a stone, a cornerstone chosen and precious, and whoever believes in him will not be put to shame. To you then who believe, he is precious. But for those who do not believe, the stone that builders rejected has become the very head of the corner, and a stone that makes them stumble, and a rock that makes them fall. They stumble because they disobey the word, as they were destined to do. But you are a chosen race, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, God's own people, in order that you may proclaim the mighty acts of him who called you out of darkness and into his marvelous light. Once you were not a people, but now you are God's people. Once you had not received mercy, but now you have received mercy. The word of God for you, the people of God. I want to give a special welcome at this time to all our kids that are with us today. I want to call you by name. Hi, Jackson, Chloe, Claire, and Haley. Hi, Aria, Julia, Taylor, and Jacob. Hi, Reed, Elise, Bjorn, and Parker. Hi, Louise, Henry, Oliver, and Sadie. Hi, Ivan, Parker, Margo, and Everett. Hi, Anya, August, Evelyn, and Audrey. Hi, Emma, Storer, Harrison, and Myra. Hi, Inga, Max, Carter, and Harrison. Hi, Wyatt, Stella, Ellie, and Benji. Hi, Savannah, Elsie, Mira, Linda, and Luke. Hi, Bryn, Henrik, Emery, Dylan, and JJ. Hi, Jack, James, Kaylin, and Ayla. Hi, Addison, Nora, Jake, and Bryce. Hi, Jack, Anya, Trevor, and Myla. Hi, Kale, Lars, Michael, and Asher. Hi, Zachary, Grace, Nicholas, and Pear. Hi, Emily, Kaya, Noah, and Tori. Hi, Eli, Sophia, Ella, Tio, and Caroline. Well, today, hopefully you know this already, today is a wonderful day. It's Mother's Day. You know, I want to tell you about my mom. She's somebody that's incredibly important to my life. My mom worked uh, for years part-time as uh, a night nurse. Uh, she worked in the evenings um, and then so that she could take care of us during the day. For years, my mom worked tirelessly uh, and selflessly um, to help provide for me and my brother and my sister as we grew up. My mom is somebody who's caring, who's loving, um, and who works hard to make a difference in other people's lives. What is your mom like? I'm sure she's many of those same wonderful things as well. And so today on this Mother's Day, I want you to turn your attention to your mom. I want you to give your mom a big hug and tell her that you love her. Our moms right now are working so hard to um, provide for us and provide stability for us during this pandemic. It can be, be a scary time for us and it can be a scary time for our parents as well. Um, but moms out there and motherly figures, thank you, thank you, thank you so much for all that you do. Um, we are so grateful for you and you are doing a great job. And so kids, please go tell your moms that you love them. Give them a big hug. Thanks, and we'll continue with our reading. The Gospel according to John. Jesus says, Do not let your hearts be troubled. Believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house there are many dwelling places. If it were not so, would I have told you that I go to prepare a place for you? And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and will take you to myself, so that where I am, there you may be also. And you know the way to the place where I am going. Thomas said to him, Lord, we do not know where you are going. How can we know the way? Jesus said to him, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. If you know me, you will know my Father also. 
From now on, you do know him and have seen him. Philip said to him, Lord, show us the Father and we will be satisfied. Jesus said to him, Have I been with you all this time, Philip, and you still do not know me? Whoever has seen me has seen the Father. How can you say, show us the Father? Do you not believe that I am in the Father and the Father is in me? The words that I say to you, I do not speak on my own, but the Father who dwells in me does his works. Believe me that I am in the Father and the Father is in me. But if you do not, then believe me because of the works themselves. Very truly, I tell you, the one who believes in me will also do the works that I do, and in fact, will do greater works than these, because I am going to the Father. I will do whatever you ask in my name, so that the Father may be glorified in the Son. If in my name you ask me for anything, I will do it. The Gospel of the Lord. You look like your father. People have told me that. You look like your father. But when I was younger, people used to say, you look like your mother, and that was true. As a child, I more resembled my mother. But DNA does funny things. And in recent years, when I've run into someone who knew my dad, they say to me, you look like your father. And the family resemblance was clear. Now I wonder, have people told, told you that you look like your mom or your dad or your grandparent? Family resemblances can be strong. DNA is powerful. But it's not just our DNA that's involved in family resemblances. For instance, I remember that my dad had a big laugh, a big, boisterous, cackling laugh. And truth be told, when I was younger, when he laughed in front of a group of people, I was embarrassed. I was a teenager after all, and I was embarrassed by almost everything my parents did. Well, a few years ago, my brother and I were reminiscing about his wedding. And he said to me, I don't remember you at my wedding very much, but I do remember your laugh. It was really loud. He didn't say embarrassing. He didn't have to. It was clear he wasn't give me, giving me a compliment. And I felt badly. But then I realized he was right. Without even thinking about it, we sometimes speak like our parents, behave like our parents, laugh like our parents. It was a funeral. I didn't know the deceased. And I was standing with a group of people looking at photos. And some of the adult children were there. People were telling stories about their mom. And someone said to one of the kids, I just love all your stories about your mom. I wish I had a chance to meet her before she died. And then someone replied, if you've met these kids, you've met their mother. It was very moving it, it was very moving for the kids to hear someone say that they could see a family resemblance between their mother and them especially when that meant that some of her goodness could be seen in them today i'm thinking about family resemblances not just because it's mother's day weekend but because i think jesus speaks about the same reality in today's gospel and he speaks about family resemblances in some very surprising ways, ways that matter for your life and for mine. Now, what you have just heard from John's gospel is very sad. It is a poignant moment. Jesus is speaking to his disciples. He has just told them that his betrayal and death are near. Jesus is trying to comfort them ahead of time. Do not let your hearts be troubled, he says. He is going to get things ready for them, he tells them. He's going to prepare a place for them. 
Desperate, confused, Thomas finally asked the question that must have been on everybody's mind. Lord, we don't know where you're going. How can we know the way? Thomas is honest. We not only don't know where you're going, but we don't know the way either. In Jesus' answer to Thomas's question, I am the way and the truth and the life. And we wonder, that's an answer? What we would like for Jesus to say is something like, well, here are the six sure steps for following my way. Here is, uh, here is how you need to walk if you're going to walk my way. Or for him to say, let me carefully define my truth for you. Write this down, here are the specifics. Or we would like a class on comparative religion. Jesus, how do you stand up against Moses or Muhammad? But not here. Jesus does none of that. This is not that kind of moment. Jesus is speaking to a small circle of friends the night before he died. These are people who Jesus loved. They are hurting. And so Jesus was giving them everything he could think of to help them survive without him. And he uses language that people who are in love so often do. You are the only man in the world for me. You are the best mother everyone ever had. No one has ever loved a child the way that I love you. This is passionate, personal language. Jesus is assuring them, I'm the only one for you. You have made the right choice. No one can lead you to God better than I can. Well, then Philip blurts out, Lord, show us the Father and we will be satisfied. And Jesus seems a little disappointed that Philip and the others haven't already picked up on this family resemblance. Jesus says, and this may be old news to you or the best surprise ever, whoever has seen me has seen the Father. Do you hear that? Jesus is saying, look, look at the one looking at you, look at me. If you see me, you, you see what your heavenly father looks like. Listen to me, if you hear me speak, you are hearing your heavenly father's voice. Watch me. If you see the way I behave and act, that's showing you how the heavenly father behaves and acts. Well, Jesus, you look like your father. Well, Jesus, you, you sound like your father. Well, Jesus, you, you act like your father. What a family resemblance. Now, many people struggle with belief in God. God is, uh, God is beyond our comprehension, they say. God is invisible to our physical eyes. And that fact can at times for some of us make God seem just distant and disconnected or hard to know. But Christians have this amazing, unique conviction that what Jesus says to Philip, to the disciples, and now to us is true. Whoever has seen me has seen the Father. That's what God looks like. He looks like his son. Now, the Bible never debates the question whether there is a God. No, no, no. The question throughout the Bible is which God we're going to trust in and which God we're going to follow. And this is why we need to pay so much attention to Jesus in the Gospels. Because if we get God wrong, we get everything wrong. Our view of the world, our view of others, our jobs, our politics, our way of living, our very lives. Do you want to know what God, your Heavenly Father, looks like? He looks like His Son. His son, humble enough to be born in a barn, gentle enough to hug children, compassionate enough to hold hands with the sick, sacrificing and courageous enough to die on a cross, victorious over death and all that is deadly. That's what God looks like. He looks like his son. 
Do you want to know what God sounds like? He sounds like his son. His son who says, blessed are the peacemakers. His son who says, your sins are forgiven. His son who says, forgive 70 times seven. His son who says, when I was hungry, you fed me. That's what God sounds like. He, he sounds like his son. And you want to know how God acts. He acts like his son, his son who feeds the crowds, who calms the storms, who heals the sick, who speaks the truth. That's how God acts, like his son. And now we know in Jesus what God is like. But that isn't the only surprise in this gospel. Jesus says something that I find to be the most amazing part of this gospel. Jesus says, I assure you that whoever believes in me will do the works that I do. They will do even greater works than these. Is Jesus serious? To these grieving confused, don't get it, disciples. It's to them he, Jesus promises. Because he is so closely related to the Father and because they are so closely related to him, because there is a family resemblance, they will do amazing things in his name. During these days of pandemic, during these days when our lives have been so changed, there are many people wondering, where do we find God? Where do we see God in the middle of this mess? And here's my suggestion. The answer to that question is this. If you want to see what God is up to right now, pay attention to what God's people are up to right now. Right now, around the world, Christians are feeding the hungry, supporting supporting those who have lost their jobs, helping those who are struggling with few resources. Right now, Christians are checking in on their elderly neighbors. They're buying grocery gift cards for people they've never met, calling up people they know who are lonely. Right now, Christians are praying at home. They're spending time with family, taking a walk to be with God in the quiet. Right now, Christians are making sure that hungry school kids get a lunch and they're writing letters to lonely senior citizens who have to stay in their rooms. God's people are putting the needs of others before their own needs. And right now, when others are despairing, Christians dare to be people filled with hope. All this, all this because right now, you look like family, Jesus' family. And whatever Jesus wants to do, he chooses to do it through you. Yes, he knows you're confused, grieving even, but he doesn't wait for you to get your head straight about him. He has his head straight about you, your family. And so I want you to take that promise with you as you go about your days. And as you do, you might pray this prayer. Lord, remind me of your grace. Fill me with your spirit. Renew my soul. I pray that I might live as your child today and honor you in all that I do. And I hope that people you meet throughout the day will say of you, you, you look and act and live like Jesus. Now, that's a family resemblance to rejoice in. Thanks be to God. Amen.
Let us pray. Gracious God, we are grateful that in trusting you, the salvation you have given us in your Son, we have in you a family. And that in your family, we know who and whose we are. We are grateful that because you are our Heavenly Father, we can forgive, we can be generous, we can live as one of your family. And so for your grace, for your choosing us, we give you thanks. And God, our peace and our strength, we pray for our nation and the world. Protect the most vulnerable among us, especially all who are currently sick or in isolation. Grant wisdom, patience, and clarity to healthcare workers, especially as their work caring for others puts them at greater risk. Give us the courage to face these days, not with fear, but with compassion, concern, and acts of service, trusting that you abide with us always. And we pray, God, today for mothers. Not all of us are parents, and not all of us will be. But on this Mother's Day, we pray for mothers, for motherly figures, and for parents everywhere. We give thanks to you for our mothers, for their support, for their sacrifice, that we might have life. And we plead on behalf of mothers, for mothers too young to parent, for those who parent alone, and for those who must parent in poverty. We ask for the grace to forgive those who have been badly hurt by their parents. May these wounds be healed where they are not, and may they be understood and endured. And we pray for comfort to those who have a deep sense of loss this day, for those who have lost children, for those who have lost parents. And God, we ask for your guidance and strength for all parents in these challenging days. May your Holy Spirit guide them as they make decisions for the sake of their children and families. May you strengthen them with your peace and patience. And we pray for children. We ask that you'll be with them in times of suffering and doubt, that you declare your grace to them, that they may know the goodness of your everlasting love. And as we go about our days this week, Lord, remind us of your grace. Fill us with your spirit. Renew our souls. And we pray that we might live as your children and honor you in all that we do. All this we pray in your Son, Jesus' name. Amen. And now I ask you to pray with me the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen.
And now receive this benediction in the words of St. Paul. May the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace in believing, so that you may abound in hope by the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen.